At the beginning of danger at Dead Man's Pass, Hal's journey begins in Crewe. But our journey to do the research for the fourth Adventures on Trains book began early one morning in January 2020 at St Pancras International Station in the Eurostar Terminal. Sam and I climbed aboard the first of our 10 train journey and took out our notebooks. As we travelled through the Channel Tunnel, under the sea, we plotted and planned what kind of a case Hal would be solving next. When we arrived at Gardenor Station in Paris, we followed signs for the Metro, the Parisian underground network of trains, where we got onto the second train of our trip to Gare de Lyon. In Gare de Lyon, there is a famous restaurant called Le Train Bleu, where we planned to set a scene in which Hal and Nat would meet Baron Essenbach and they would discover more about the mysterious death of Alexander Kratzenstein. It was time for our third train, to Quai de Montebello, opposite Notre Dame Cathedral, and to a very special bookshop called Shakespeare and Company. Having finished gathering French ingredients for our book, we took a double-decker tube train to Gare de l'Est, where incredible art hangs in the station. We were to catch a TGV across the German border. Upon arrival in Karlsruhe, we sought out a restaurant for dinner and then returned to the station to catch the night jet. My first ever sleeper train experience and our sixth train that day. That is a cool train. <laughs> there were six bunks in a compartment. Sam and I had the top two. It would have been a fine night's sleep, but for a passenger with a proud snore. She made it into the book too. As we slept, the train travelled through Germany. Sam woke me on the approach to Berlin and once dressed, we ran to the end of the train to witness our arrival. It is an S -bahn. The day was spent touring Berlin, home to the first electric passenger train in 1879. We travelled on the S Bahn and the U-Bahn. We went to a department store called Cadeve, which is where we decided Hal and Uncle Nat would buy their disguises. We found a building to base the Kratzenstein's Berlin home upon and generally absorbed as much of Berlin as we could. The next morning, we set off on the last leg of our journey, catching an early train from Berlin Travelling to Wernigrode, on the north slopes of the Hartz Mountains. Walking into Wernigrode is like stepping into the pages of Grimm's fairy tales. You half expect to see Hansel and Gretel following a trail of breadcrumbs. We visited the castle, from which we took much inspiration for the spooky Schloss Kratzenstein, the family seat in the foothills of the Harz Mountains. Inside, there were suits of armour, weapons hung on the walls, stuffed boars, and an incredible dining room. That night, we went to a bar that delivered drinks by train. And all of it 
went into our book. But we had travelled all this way to ride on the Brockenbahn, the last timetabled steam railway in Europe that takes people to the misty peak of the Brocken Mountain, where Goethe set a portion of his famous play Faust, and where, on Volpurgis night, witches are reported to hold revels with the devil. <laughs>